So one way to consider energy is that it's a bit like money. Now money can be stored in different forms. It can be stored in the form of coins like we have here. It could be stored maybe in your bank or it could be stored on some mobile app or something like that. And um, what we can think about is maybe the rate at which money gets transferred from one place to another. So for example, if I was to transfer 5p per second, that probably what you want to know then is like how long am I gonna be transferring this money for? That's the kind of thing that you might be interested in. Um, and it's the same with energy, okay? We can also look at how quickly energy is transferred, and this is what we call power. Now, power is defined as the rate of doing work, and the word rate just means per unit time, or indeed uh, per second. So this is how much energy is transferred per second. And again, work and energy are the same thing pretty much, you know, you do work on something, you're, you're transferring energy to it. Uh, the equation for this, is that P stands for power, so it's a capital P, you've got to make sure it's a capital, and that's equal to the work done per unit time. Or indeed, we can also write it as power is equal to the energy transferred per unit time. So we can use a W or we can use an E. Um, what do we measure this in? Well, we measure work and energy in joules, and we measure time in seconds. So that means the unit for power can be uh, the joule per second, or actually, because that's a bit, bit getting a bit long-winded and we use power all the time, it also has a unit of watts, where capital W stands for watt. And this is named after a guy, a Scottish inventor called James Watt, and the work he did um, as he was kind of sort of one of the first people to start uh, really kind of getting things like steam engines working. Now, how do you define one watt? Well, basically, uh, one watt is defined as uh, when uh, one joule is transferred per second. And these equations here are the main ways that we can work out the power which is transferred. But there are a few more that you might want to be aware of and you'll probably find later in the course. We can also say that power is equal to force times velocity. Uh, but then if we think about maybe electrical power, we can say that electrical power is equal to current times potential difference. Or indeed power is equal to I squared R, so the current squared times the resistance. Or even power is equal to V squared over R. So the, these four equations can also be used to work out the power, but the ones that we tend to focus on most of the time are, especially when we're looking at the rate of work um, that's actually happening, power is equal to the work done per unit time. So let's consider a nice example. Maybe you've got a bird that flies up into a tree. Now perhaps the height of the tree is equal to 20 metres. Uh, it takes the bird uh, 5.8 seconds to go for that distance. Uh, and the mass of the bird is equal to 0 0.10 kilogram. So what is the average power output of the wings of that bird? Well, let's think about it. Um, first of all, it's gained potential energy, uh, and that potential energy is equal to mgh. So that's equal to 0 0.10 times 9.81 times 20. And if you put the numbers into your calculator, you find it comes out as 19.62 joules. And I'm just going to keep that uh, all the kind of numbers that uh, have been stored in my calculator. I'm just going to write them all down so I don't round down too early. But what's the power of that bird? Well, we're going to assume that it's um, working at a constant rate. So um, we're looking at the average power. And the power is going to be equal to the energy transferred uh, per unit time, which equals 19.62 uh, which is the amount of energy transferred, that's the work done by the bird against gravity, over the time of 5.8 seconds. And this gives us a value of 3.3828, uh, and it kind of keeps going on. So that would be the power in watts. And finally, just to finish off this question, uh, I'm going to give it to an appropriate number of significant figures. I've got two significant figures here, two significant figures there, and therefore the power is going to be equal to 3.4 watts. Another example we could look at is maybe the work done by the bird. Perhaps it's got an average power output equal to uh, 2.0 watts, and the bird flies for a time of 30 minutes. So how much work does um, the bird do in this time? Well, we can say that power is equal to the work done per unit time. So the work done is equal to the power times time. In this case, the power is 2.0 watts. The time is equal to 30 minutes, and then we've got to times it by 60 to get it into seconds. We can then put these numbers into our calculator and find that the total work done is equal to 3,600 watts, 
or indeed this could be equal to um, 3.6 kilowatts even, or 3.6 times 10 to the 3 watts. And again, I've given my answer like this, so that's to two significant figures, just like my raw data here and my raw data there. So maybe, oh, sorry, joules. That's right, isn't it? So at 3.6 times 10 to the 3 joules is the amount of work done by this bird as it flies for 30 minutes. So hopefully that helps just a little bit more about power, work done, and the energy transferred.